Wish for better storytellers, Disney. In fact, this film, Wish, is a film that Disney clearly regrets making. It was set out to celebrate 100 years of Disney animation. And not only did it completely fail, catastrophically so based on the box office numbers, it also destroyed the work of better men. Much, much better men, in fact. Uh, men that were so great that their work was held up as classics, was held up as the pinnacle of the art form. And for good reason, it was. So much so that it, it appealed to generations of young people starting in 1937. It was so important, so, so distinct, that it earned special Oscars. It earned a special place in pop culture and culture around the world. But it's very clear that Disney does regret making this film. And if you look at just the earnings alone, Disney should have never released this. Welcome to the new Disney, folks. Here we go. So I wanted to let things cool down a little bit, and I wanted to get some actual numbers because sometimes we're still getting estimates on Monday. Well, we now have those numbers, and those numbers are not good. So we're gonna call it like it is. We're gonna do balls and strikes, and the numbers here are catastrophically bad. For a film to open on a huge holiday weekend, that's an actual privilege. It means that as a studio, you have some heft, you have some gravitas, you have some power in the industry. It's a privilege, and it's one not to be taken lightly. Large studios like Disney have benefited from windowing for many, many years. In fact, prior to last Thanksgiving, Disney and other studios that opened over the Thanksgiving weekend had big numbers because it was an extended holiday with many young people out of school. Yet here we are with a seven day weekend, mind you, a seven day weekend at this point, And we have a sub $50 million domestic box office release. That's something that's quite unheard of. If you average it out on a theater basis, that's less than $1,500 a day in theaters, grand totaling an average of $7 million a day over those seven days. Pretty easy math, seven days, 49 million, and there you are. Conversely, Hunger Games, Songbirds and Snakes, average theater earnings in its second weekend, now mind you, second weekend, is much higher. In fact, the retention was very impressive. There was very little fall off as far as the week to week drop off. Normally we see pretty decent fall off. This stayed in the 30s, which is impressive. In fact, the difference here for this weekend is staggering because Hunger Games beats out Wish at the box office rather handily. In fact, and let me check my notes real quick. Yeah, Wish came in third place behind the interminably long, historically inaccurate Napoleon film that I wasn't gonna go to. Wait, I'm sorry, it was third on a holiday weekend that's not so historical. That's beyond embarrassing, right? I think so. Look, anyone clinging on to the idea that Disney animation is in good shape right now is, well, delusional. Anyone doesn't recognize that under Jennifer Lee's leadership, this studio is not anything but super woke, intersectional, and neo-Marxist in the extreme is clearly fully checked out. Um, and I, you know what? Remember that name, Jennifer Lee. There's a reason you're gonna want to, because she's going to be the next KK in our zeitgeist. In fact, in a lot of circles, she already is. She is a huge anchor around Disney's neck and probably the main catalyst for the fact that Pixar and Disney Animation Studios will become one in the very near future. But returning to Wish itself, there was nothing for the audience to cling on to, even from the very beginning. There was nothing that touched them to their core. There was nothing to market, which was ref reflected in a very uninspiring trailer. The visual appeal was clearly absent in the extreme, and those few people that were tripping over themselves to praise the very weak soundtrack, go to bed please, you're very ill. At this point in time, Disney is on a streak of failures only Lionsgate is familiar with. In the last six films released by any of Disney studios, they've lost over $1.2 billion in releasing them. 
not made $1.2 billion, they've lost it. What's worse is the long-term outlook for this film. <laughs> well, I guess the actual long-term outlook of the studios aren't very good either, but it's far worse than anybody can imagine. The projections right now are being dropped left and right, more in line with reality. Everybody that was out there jumping on top of this film is equivocating, hedging, and backtracking on strong, out-of-touch statements. I can't imagine even the uh, incredibly deft at dodging reality, Grace Randolph, is going to be able to heap praise on this film and its performance. But who knows, she does say a lot of dumb things. Also bad for this film is that it's skewing so heavily female. So much of the audience was female. In fact, it was 64%. Not quite as high as Little Mermaid, but that's not a number that you want. It's a huge number skewing to one demographic in a particular age group, and that doesn't bode well for success. If you look at how the Marvels is performing, well, they're both dying off rather quickly. I expect the same fate for Wish. Now, Disney has effectively killed off all of its studios at this point. Nothing, nothing's viable. Marvel's dying, Star Wars is dead, Lucasfilm. Pixar is on life support, and uh, well, Disney Animation clearly doesn't know how to make a good film anymore. Even Disney recognizes that fact. They're even telling Wall Street that they're doing all of this on purpose and that they don't intend to stop anytime soon. That's not a good way to run a company. What will become of the company? Well, I imagine that an accelerating rapid decay will lead to an eventual yard sale of all of the things that Bob Iger coveted and then purchased. Ultimately, Bob's legacy is gonna be one of buying and burning down his own kingdom to rule over the ashes. I think that's his plan. Congrats, Bob. You are the worst corporate leader in history, and I'm not sure there are a lot of competitors in that field. In fact, I think I'm going to take it upon myself to write your unofficial biography, because I think your self-congratulatory book is entirely inaccurate at this point. I'm gonna start by calling it Destroyer of Lifetimes. How's you, how do you like the ring to that, Bob? It is quite possible that this film, Wish, won't even come into the opening weekend numbers of, let's say, Frozen. The domestic overall performance of Wish may not even get to $100 million. What does that tell you? Look, I know I've gone a little hard in the paint on this one, but deservedly so. But I am curious as to what you see as the outcome for this film. Are you as negative as I am about it? Do you see anything positive on Disney's horizon? Is there something out there you can point to to say that's good? And finally, will the last shot at something good be Deadpool 3? And will it actually turn out to be good and make money as well? Because I think at this point, that's a reasonable question. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below and be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, Wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene, especially now that we're in cold and flu season. And until next time, see ya!